This week, we are talking to the intensely talented and fascinating guitarist, Mimi Fox. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Wild Women of Song. We are so excited and honored to have as our guest today, jazz guitarist extraordinaire, an international name in jazz guitar, Mimi Fox. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Pamela. Great to be here. It's really great to have you here. And I especially am happy you're here, not because you're such an amazing player, but because I know that you also are a wonderful songwriter and the way that you approach songs when you arrange them. And I know this because you've talked about it with me a little bit really comes from a great respect for the song itself. So I'm so excited to hear what we're going to come up with today. Well, thank you. You know, it's funny you mentioned that, Pamela, because for me, uh, you know this, that my mom was a singer and sang up until the time I was about 12. Or you may not know that. Did I, did you, yeah. do you know that? Yeah. yeah. And so for me, the biggest compliment that a reviewer can give me is to say that I play lyrically. And when I talk to my students about that, whether it's Autumn Leaves or, what, or a more modern jazz piece by Coltrane, I encourage people to get inside the music. And, and for me, with the Great American Songbook, that's the lyrics. And so as I'm playing, I try to really uh, honor what the lyricist had in mind. It's not just about the music. It is very much about the words and because they go together yeah. so beautifully. Well, that's a big divide, as you know, in players and interpreters of this music. For some people, it's mathematic and technical. And for other people, it's a combination of that challenge, but also added with the actual emotional intent of the writer and then what you bring to it of so, course right yeah. exactly but yeah for me i try to take the best of both worlds i love jazz because it's an endless uh study of harmony and melody and rhythm and uh and it's so exciting it, it meshes so many wonderful styles i think seamlessly in what we call jazz just the broad umbrella term of jazz but for me the um the great American songbook is the foundation of uh, the improvising. I mean, that's the common language. So whether I'm in Guam or I'm in New Zealand or I'm in, uh, you know, Brazil, having that common language of those songs is very important. Mm -hmm. And it's what we use as jazz musicians as a springboard for creative development and for our own ideas yeah. as composers, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. You were in New York, right? That's right. And uh, how old were you when you started out there? Um, well, I mean, I think, um, like I said, you know, t you mean when I started playing professionally around yeah. New York and uh, through New England? Uh, I was in my late teens, actually. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, so were you and the chick in the band? I was the chick in the band. Although there were a few, I, I, there were a few uh, women uh, women's bands that I worked with, rock bands back in back in the seventies. Uh, so, yeah. Do you remember any of their names? Well, I think I played a brief stint with the New Haven Women's Liberation Rock Band, ah. and I think I might have had a. Um, a fake ID because I was under age <laughs> uh, to play to play the clubs in in Connecticut. So, but it was all part of paying dues. And then I played with a top forty band where we toured uh, up and down the East Coast, playing mostly the hotel circuit. You know, six nights a week, uh, four sets a night. Pretty pretty intense. Yeah. And probably your students can't, younger students can't even relate to that. But I remember being the chick in the band. Oh, yeah. And, you know, there was like, you really had to do a little bit extra to prove yourself to totally. get that respect. Yeah, totally. In fact, I tell younger women um, musicians, students of mine in, 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 you know, college or college bound students that, you know, at some point you have to stop overcompensating as an instrumentalist or probably as a vocalist as well and just realize you have to believe in yourself you have to shed the uh whispers and uh and you know i think for women there are both internal and external constraints external are what your role should be in society and and you know that can be a quite a heavy lift but there's internal constraints that i think women and young girls have too which is a lot about uh self-esteem and just putting yourself out there because yeah. as a as a vocalist or when you're leading a whole band 
or uh, as an instrumentalist, you know, you, it's particularly in jazz. I mean, when you step on stage, you're really, you know, you're commanding attention and you're saying to people, hey, I have something I want to, you know, share with you. And that takes a certain amount of, uh, you know, chutzpah and, 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 and believe in yourself. And as a jazz leader, I would imagine also you are really saying, follow me. That's you know, right. Right? Right. So, you know, you're playing with your ensemble, your combo, but when you have an idea, you're saying, come this way, you know, right. and right. you've got to believe that uh, it's going to be a good place to go, and they've and got to believe it's going to be a good place exactly. to go. Exactly. Right. And at, at some point, like I said, you have to um, you have to start trusting yourself. That's, that's the biggest thing. If I can give uh, young women, and young men for that matter, it's a very important thing to, to surround yourself with people that believe in you, that will support you. Constructive criticism, great. But, uh, you know, I had, I certainly had my share of experiences when I was younger where guys were very disparaging of me and my playing. I had, for instance, so I was playing in a funk band when I was about 20, and this guy came up to me and he said, well, you know, Mimi, you, you play pretty good rhythm, but you shouldn't try to solo. <laughs> and, which was a bad thing to say to someone like me because that set me on a course of for the next 20 years practicing eight hours a day, you know. So I was like, oh, yeah. But, um, but you know, I always tell I always tell my younger students that what they need to do is um, find the people that will support you and, and, and nurture your creativity. Well, we hope that you're enjoying these discussions about women and jazz and the songs that inspire us. This week, we want to definitely recommend to you that you get Mimi's new album, Standards Old and New. We hope that you're enjoying hearing about these women and the stories behind them. Please tell your friends about it and make sure you subscribe. We're on every Wednesday, youtube.com slash wildwomenofsong. Hi, I'm Mimi Fox, and I want to encourage everyone out there to please check out Wild Women of Song on YouTube. It's been my great pleasure to be a part of this project from inception, and I think everyone will enjoy all the great music and musicians that are being interviewed and featured on this great spot. <laughs>